Do we have another question? Um, <laughs> yes, please. He has a question right there. I want to appreciate your message, though that I came uh, not too late, but then at least uh, behind schedule. Uh, I know one thing that vengeance is of the Lord. Vengeance is of the Lord. To avenge. No. Vengeance? Yeah, it's Ven of the Lord. It's of God. Uh huh. Vengeance is of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. And you. In your speech or your message, you talk about terrorism, though I couldn't just grab that. Uh, what is the connection, what is the uh, correlation between Islam and terrorism? Uh, because it's becoming a daily trend in the world. And which, probably I want to put it, a layman, or perhaps doesn't who does not uh, well uh, rooted in religion, perhaps either Islam or Christianity, believing that Islam is, has a link with terrorism. Um, I believe it, is, it may be a misconception, but then I believe you can throw a light towards that. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, they say that a guy came to work and he was feeling perfectly okay. And someone said to him, hey man, what's wrong with you? You look sick. He said, I'm not sick. I'm okay. I'm perfectly okay. He said, no, no, you look sick. I said, look, I, tell, I know myself. I'm good. He went. Another employee came and said, hey man, what's wrong with you? You look sick. He said, yeah, I'm a little sick. I'm a little sick. He said, okay, you know, you need to, you need to take some rest. He said, okay. A third person came and said, hey, what's wrong with you? You look sick. He said, I'm very sick, man. I need to go home. What am I trying to say? If people continue to bombard you with information, you will start believing it. And this is, by the way, this example is proven by psychology. Doctors made that experiment. That if you continue to tell someone something, they will start believing it. That's why a man is always told to tell his wife, you're beautiful. <laughs> right? And then she will always tell him, how could you leave me? You said I was beautiful. So this is a fact. So now what is CNN and Fox News and all these lovely fellas out there are saying all the time? They are so afraid of the spread of Islam, there's absolutely no way to stop us. They have no means to stop the spread of Islam except media propaganda. Either we submit or we will use our mind. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Afghanistan is being attacked. Palestine is being attacked. Shall I name the countries? Iraq is being attacked. Where else can I go? except that Muslims are being killed. We are the victims of terrorism. We are the biggest victim of terrorism. And, but what do they do? They say, look, as soon as you try to fight back, you become the terrorist and they are the freedom fighters. And people believe. But that's not fair. You will not, so you will not let someone come into your house and smack you around rape your family and say I'm going to live in this house in spite of you and say here's the other cheek go ahead be my guest I love for you you're my neighbor mm -mm. and even if people say that they don't do that the truth of the matter is Muslims are often simply simply defending themselves but let me add something else terrorists we are terrorists. Now you tell me, I'm not going to speak about individuals. I don't deny there are people in the world of Islam who do act in a manner that is against Islam, which you can label as terrorism. No doubt in my mind. I know it. You know it. There's no point in denying it. 
But it is not fair to judge Islam per the actions of some Muslims. Otherwise, all Christians are crusaders. But they're not. And all Jews are Zionists. But they're not. We know that there are groups amongst every religion that are military. That's it. But let me tell you in terms of the teachings. Now, I wish that the United Nations or any other, you know, Geneva, whatever they call it, anyone will present these etiquettes of war. We believe that there's war. Because you have the right to defend yourself. Otherwise, if defending yourself was a crime, then I call on to all the countries in the world to, thre to throw their weapons in the ocean. But they won't. They have army and marine and navy. Why? Because someone may attack us. And we have to be ready to defend our soil, our land, our honor, our whatever. Okay, and Islam is what? Islam is a nation like any other nation. And we have equal rights. But you tell me a nation which says to the people, Do not kill women. Do not kill children. Do not kill elderly. Do not kill those dedicated to worship. Whatever religion, he's in his church, he's in his temple, whatever he may be, don't approach them. Do not burn a tree. Do not destroy a house. Do not kill an animal. Do not betray, do not act treacherously. Which nation on earth applies these in their warfare? None. They bomb milk factories, they bomb children, they bomb women, and kill innocent civilians. Every single day, right before our eyes. And they're not terrorists, subhanAllah. They're not. We are the terrorists. Even though we have these guidelines 1400 years ago that no one ever had and no one will ever have. So let us set the thing straight. Some Muslims misrepresenting Islam through violent acts such as going to a supermarket or a train station and bombing themselves in the name of Allah, we say Islam is the first to say this is prohibited. First, you cannot commit suicide. Second, you cannot kill innocent civilians. What Islam permits is that if the two armies meet, like armies are meeting all the time, then you have the right to do what you have to do on the battlefield. People buying vegetables to have lunch are not included. So to kill them in the name of Allah is oppression. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يزال المسلم في فسحة من دينه ما لم يصب دما حراما. The believer will remain within the margins of his religion unless he spills blood illegally. Once he kills one innocent soul, he will be held responsible by Allah and it may be the reason he will enter the hellfire. It's a very serious crime to kill people, period. So these are the things we have to do. Go back to the teachings of Islam, not from the internet. Don't go to Sheikh Google. He is misguided. He's off the track. He quotes Wikipedia. And I don't know what else. I mean, you put one, one keyword and you will get 100 conflicting results. So people go think they've discovered everything. They go on, you know, on the internet, put Islam and terrorism, and they get all these articles by people who don't really, you know, represent us. Nor do they share the truth and say, oh, okay, khalas, I figured it out. No, that's not fair. We have the Quran. Read it. See what Allah says about killing innocent souls. And you will find in the Quran Allah telling the believers how to deal with the battlefield. People love to quote those. Kill them wherever you find them. They don't bother to read the context. They don't bother to know about the, the history of these ayat. And so they come up with their own conclusions without them justifying them. But this is not fair approach. Read the Quran. Read the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it will become clear to you that Islam is against terrorism in the way it is done today. Meaning innocent and terrorizing innocent people who, are, who have done nothing 
except that they live in some country or they have a particular ethnicity, so you try to wipe them out. Islam is the first to condemn and to be against this kind of behavior. And we have to realize that through the reliable sources. If you wish, I can email you some and you know, you can share them and you can read them to come to that realization yourself.